Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today, in this new episode of this series, I'd like to try and see if, as a native Italian speaker, I can understand the language called Esperanto. Now, for those of you who don't know what Esperanto is, to give you a very small and brief summary, Esperanto is an artificially made language created by linguists in the late 1800s to try and formulate, construct, build, design a language that could be very easy to learn, very simple in its conjugations, declinations, rules without exceptions, but also using it as a common ground, heavily influenced by Romance languages and European languages. In other words, it's a language that was specifically made to make it very easy for people both from the Romance language family and the Germanic language family uh, to be able to learn it, even though, to be honest, once you examine it, uh, the reality is that it's very heavily Romance language influenced. The language did get some momentum, but then the growth was blocked during World War II for obvious reasons. Now, personally, I never was really interested in Esperanto. I'm not interested in artificial languages. The overall idea when it comes to simple communication was sound, I suppose, but then again, we already have English for that. And the whole section that had to do with diplomatic affairs, I was really into it which means I have no training in it whatsoever and I've never heard it spoken. So how about we do just that and see how much I can understand with zero training. Let's go. Esperanto Numbers Uno, do, tri, quar, quin, ses, sep, oc, now, dec. Greetings and phrases. Salud. Okay, so yeah, all the language, all the numbers are pretty easy, pretty straightforward, very similar. There is a lot of common ground, as you can see. A little closer to Latin, perhaps, but sure, yeah, understand those. Greetings and phrases. Saluton. Bonan matenon. Bonan vesperon. Bonan nocton. Interesting. So, uh, out of these, of course, because they're put in order, the, the one that I don't understand, I think it's good afternoon, bona vesperum. I don't know where they're getting that one from. Uh, but the others, sure, once again, it's like a simplified version of Latin, if you will. Gis, adiau, gis la revido. These last ones kind of sounded a little Portuguese slash Spanish, but then again, this is one of the problems with a language with an artificial language like Esperanto. There isn't really one correct way to pronounce it. I mean, if if I go at it as an Italian and you say it, you pronounce it based on the uh, pronunciation rules of Spanish, Portuguese, French. I mean, at the end of the day, there isn't a native way to speak it. So I think all would be in theory con correct. So perhaps this speaker now gave it a little bit of a Portuguese slash Spanish flair to it, but I, I mean, it is what it is. Let's go. Dunia and the Enchanted Forest. Dunia kai la sor charbaro. Anta o multai, multai yaroi, en suda regiono de esperantuyo. Logis infanino apudarbaro, quies nomo esis dunia. Dunia, logis, en granda bela domo, con xia patro, xia patrino, kai xia frateto mumu. Dunia. So, uh, the first part I didn't understand much, to be honest. Then, I believe they said something about a big house, because dom, I think they pronounce it domo, which sounds like domus in Latin. Uh, this would be very easy for a Romanian to pick up as well. In Italian, we say casa, but then when we, just like in English, we say domestico, like domestic, and that's the root with domus, which is still there. So, I understand that, and I think she's living with brothers and sisters, maybe. Es es lerta, inteligenta, que tre laborema. She amis legi dica in libroin, kai pasi multa in horoin, en la biblioteco de Shia Patro. Of, of this part, I think this Dunia person seems to be like an intelligent girl, and I believe she says, the, the person said that she spends a lot of time in the library. That would be my, my guess. Of the Dunia, iris al arbaro, por rinconti, shianami con puco, kiologis ene de sorcha arbego. Puco, estis yuna sorchisto, Kaikune kundunia protectis la plantoin calabestoin del arbaro contra malbona sorchistino kiulogis en malnovan nigran castel. Yeah, now, now, now they lost me. I mean, they're talking about a castle. They're talking about some kind of exorcism or spell, protection spell, um, but against something. Uh, so, of course, I, I don't know the premises of this tale, so I'm just, I have to rely entirely on how much I can recognize the words. And so far, I am struggling a bit. Whatever they did to try and make it easier, I know, the, the only word I know in Esperanto is the word for field, 
which I know is campo. And that one is easy because it's campo in Italian as well. And I suppose in, in a few other languages, even in Greek, there is a similarity, there is a similar word to that. Uh, but that one will be a little harder, I think, for an English speaker because yes, you have the word camp, but it's usually understood slightly differently. Uh, so it might become a false friend. Tiu tago, dunia prepari sin por el iri carrenconti xianamikon. Xien metis en xia tornistro, manjajon, sorchan bastonon, Okay, so whatever this linguist did to try and make it easier doesn't seem like it's working with me. It, it, it does seem like it would maybe it would require less effort than any other language if, if he made it exceptionally regular, if you wish, like without irregular verbs, without exceptions. So I guess you still have to put some work in it. What we are gathering here so far is that it's not a language just because it was made with the idea of being easy so they could be learned by everyone anyone in Europe then you just understand it without any training because I'm not understanding it much in fact I understand Spanish more easily than Esperanto that's the first thing we're noticing so this already means I don't know there is something they did maybe they should have made it easier to be honest um, but yeah let's continue it, it does sound nice but when I say sounds nice again it's artificial is it sounding nice because of the native tongue of the person who is trying to read it and maybe it would sound completely different if someone else did very probable Kai surbranche prenis sian bastonon kai ekris fairon kai la monstro estis fulmita per fairlumo. No idea. No, I think she said that there is a monster, of course, and then this monster is I don't know trying to get Dunia, I suppose, but I'm guessing the the verb. And then she took something like a branch to cast something like a spell, maybe. But it's it's complete. Like I'm I'm trying to guess from a few roots of my knowledge of Latin but it's not enough. I'm not particularly invested in it, I have to say, because you see, one of the things that make languages so fun to explore, to learn, is the culture. But there is no culture in Esperanto because there is no country, there is no people that created it naturally as a natural process or phenomenon. Therefore, there not being any culture in it, and it being instead just a means to an end, it's a tool, it's a utensil, it's void of interest for me. I'm, I wouldn't spend 10 minutes on, it, on learning Esperanto. I'd rather learn English, Spanish and Mandarin. And now I can communicate with, with the majority of people in the world. Not to mention Esperanto is completely useless when you're trying to use it to communicate with, with like Asia or even the Slavic word from that point of view, like Russia. So far, not so good. Let's try another video with an actual person speaking, maybe coming from a different place. Let's go. Saluton de Budapest, Hungary. Mi estas Stella. So now, I know she, yeah, she said she introduced herself and she said she's from Hungary, uh, Budapest, and then she said that, I think she said that the language she's speaking is Esperanto. Kio estas Esperanto? Zamenhof en la deknaua jarcento kreis tiun ci arteparitan linguan? Okay, now she's expe she asked what is Esperanto and then she said the name of the guy who made it. Then she said the date, but I did not recognize anything past 1000. So, numbers two. Even though the first numbers from 1 to 10 were pretty easy to distinguish, it seems like when you go into hundreds and dates, I lose it completely. No idea. I know it's in the late 1800s, but if I hadn't, I wouldn't have recognized it. And then, of course, she's saying it's an artificial language. Parto de mia vivo. Ĝi ne estas hobio, ne estas iu eta afero. Ĝi estas vere ĉiutaga uzo por mi. Do por kio mi uzas Esperanto? Yeah, the only thing I understood here is why do I use Esperanto? She said something that is like part of her life. Said a few other things that I did not catch at all. Kompreneble mi uzas ĝin por kio ajn, por kio ajn mi uzas lingvojn, ĉu ne? Mi aŭskultas muzikon, mi tre ŝatas babiladi kun miaj amikoj. It's interesting, she said amikoi. So I believe probably the e at the end is plural. That's a, what I'm guessing. She uses it with her friends. So amiko, amikoi, maybe. Something like that. Sounds a little Greek, actually, when you do it that way. Mi ankau verkas iomete en Esperanto, mi faras podcastoin, kai organizas Esperantain renkontijoin. 
Mi vera povas diri al vi che Esperanto Culturo è stato chi ho playa ricigis mian vivon. Mi tre gioia savi tiom da internaziai contactoi dank alla lingua. I get missed most of it. She said something about international contact or c- communication. I'm gonna finish it because it's almost over. Let's see if you can understand a bit more. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna pause it. I'm just gonna let it finish. So let's see if you can understand more than me. I'm not understanding much. But then again, she's mentioning this thing about international communication. Let's go. Kai anko mi povas diri ke dank al esperanto, kai dank al tio ke mi kreskis kun du lingvoj, lernado de aliaj lingvoj igis multe pli facila por mi. Mi parolas la anglan, la francan kai la nederlandan, kai ancora planas lerni ke kai aliaj lingvoj. Do, tio estas malonge pri mi, mi esperas ke vi ŝatas Esperanton aŭ ke vi planas lerni aŭ lernos aŭ jam lernas kaj tre interesas mi sti por kio vi uzas Esperanton. Okay, so uh, of this, uh, the, the one thing I understood is that, yeah, she likes it. She hopes that you might have plans to learn it. I understood a little bit. From this test, what I'm gathering as my first contact with Esperanto is I don't understand much. To me, If you have a passion for it, you you like the idea of the artificial language. She said it was very easy. That's another thing she said at the end. So if it's very easy and you like it, I know there is a community of Esperanto speakers. So it could be a way to become part of a community. And maybe you share this, brings you pleasure, go for it. But from an actual useful point of view, anytime, even if it's so much easier than all other European languages, even if it were that much easier. Any hour that you put into Esperanto is not worth, in my opinion, 15 minutes in either Spanish or English, if you still don't know those languages, from a usefulness point of view. So as a point of international communication, it's a little bit of a moot point if you ask me. But if you find it interesting for your own ideas, absolutely, who am I to tell you not to do it? Me? I'm not going to spend one more second into Esperanto. Not interested. Not fascinated. It feels empty to me. But if you disagree, absolutely, we uh, always welcome those because it's a great way to learn, you know, when you have different opinion, let me know in the comments and also let me know what the, les- the next language should be for this series. And as always, thank you for joining Metatron's Academy.